Hey everybody, it's Mr. Matthew here, and this is a video about photosynthesis, or about how energy can be obtained from sunlight. And uh, specifically, I want to talk about how uh, plants undergo photosynthesis. Just as a, a little bit of a side note, there are actually multiple different types of organisms, not just plants that undergo photosynthesis, but a lot of different types of protists, um, algae, seaweeds, even some photosynthetic bacteria. And there will be some slight differences in the types of photosynthesis that you'll see in different types of organisms organisms. And in this particular video, I'm really going to be focusing in on the type of photosynthesis you'd seen in green plants. Um, that's our primary focus. So uh, you may see some adjustments if you were to talk about different types of organisms. So uh, over here on the side where we show a uh, plant leaf and Within there, you'll see some different layers of plant tissues, everything from the epidermis to the mesophyll to the uh, lower epidermis. Um, you see the stomata, which allows for gas exchange. Within each one of these layers of tissues, there will be different plant cells. Uh, and then within those plant cells, there will be chloroplasts. And so the chloroplasts are really going to be the structure that we're going to be focusing in, in on. And we'll be talking about uh, the different parts of that um, as we move on. So let's talk about how the structure of the chloroplasts with its thylakoids and stroma facilitates photosynthesis. So uh, what you can see here is a example of a chloroplast. Uh, you'll notice that there's a double membrane to this, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. We'll talk about this more later, but this is probably one of the key pieces of evidence to the concept of endosymbiosis, how chloroplasts were once free living bacterial cells that were engulfed engulfed by an ancient eukaryotic organism. Um, and so we'll talk more about that later. Put that off to the side for now. Uh, but there is a double membrane on the outside. And then with inside there, we have these stacks of what are known as thylakoids. The thylakoids are going to have the structures that are going to specifically contain the photosynthetic pigments, and we'll look into the structure of that uh, a little bit later. And we also have stacks of thylakoid, which are referred to as granum. All right, so granum would be a stack of thylakoids. The space outside the thylakoid is known as the stroma. The stroma is basically the space outside the uh, photosynthetic pigment stacks. That's another way you can think about it. So why do we have these different regions? Really specifically looking at the thylakoids versus the stroma, these are the two regions where you're going to have the two types of reactions that take place for photosynthesis. So specifically within the thylakoids, we're going to see those light-dependent reactions, the ones that are going to take sunlight and initiate the reaction. And then the space outside of there, we're going to see the Calvin cycle or light independent reaction. So let's get into those components. So I want to model how reactants and products of photosynthesis are passed through light reactions and the Calvin cycle. So as I mentioned, photosynthesis is generally broken down into two specific reactions. Let's start talking about the light reactions. What happens here? Well, obviously, light's involved. So sunlight, or radiant energy, is going to come down and will strike the thylakoids. And again, you see them in a stack here, referred to as granum, and it'll strike one of the thylakoids. Within the thylakoid, you will have pigments, and the pigments will absorb that light. When the light strikes those thylakoids, it is going to power, power the ripping apart of water. When the water is ripped apart, oxygen will be given off as a byproduct, and the hydrogens that are taken off will be used to make ATP and will also be used to make NADPH. Now, the production of ATP is going to be done by moving hydrogens back and forth across the membrane, and then those hydrogens are captured in the molecule of NADPH. The ATP and the NADPH will be removed from those thylakoids, and they will head out into the stroma, the space outside those thylakoids. And those two ingredients will be used to power the conversion of carbon dioxide into three carbon sugars, which eventually are put together to make glucose. So ATP, as you know, is cellular energy, and NADPH is an electron and hydrogen carrier that is going to take those hydrogens that were stripped off the water, and it's going to add those along with the carbon dioxide in order to make the carbon structures, of eventually making a glucose. And specifically what happens is three CO2s at a time are turned into a three-carbon molecule. You go through the Calvin cycle twice, you get two three-carbon molecules, they'll put together and they produce a glucose. Now, when those products are made, that glucose that is made, uh, you will also recycle the NADP plus and the ADP plus P, and those will go back into the thylakoid and will be recycled back 
using the ripping apart of water from light so that you're going to cycle the ADP plus P back into ADP and the NADP plus will add the hydrogens from the water. And these um, ingredients will cycle back and forth between the thylakoid and the stroma throughout this reaction. So right here, this is one model. This is a pictorial model to show how the reactants of the light reaction, specifically the ATP and NADPH, are going to power the Calvin cycle and how the products of the Calvin cycle, the ADP plus P and NADP plus, are going to go in as reactants for the light dependent reactions. Now, the other re reactants and products in here are to the overall reaction. So if I was to write out the reaction for photosynthesis, I would say that I have six H2Os plus six CO2s are going to produce six O2s and I would also end up yielding a glucose molecule. So we should be able to tie the two major reactants to the formula to the two different chemical reactions that take place. The H2O happens in the light dependent reactions, the CO2 goes in on the Calvin cycle. And the two products that we see here come out on the two product sides. All right, so that is a quick, very quick overview of photosynthesis. I hope that was helpful and it ties nicely into the labs and activities that we do in class. All right, I'll talk to everybody soon.